Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. We're on trial again? Yeah, we're always on trial, man. I'm sorry. Judge <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. This is the Bunny Rabbit's Hole. I am Jason. This is my co-host, Craig. Craig. Oh, man. <laughs> so I was at this concert once, and there was a band called, uh, oh, shit, Power Trip. It's the name of the band. Really good thrash band out of Texas. But I'm seeing them in the Portland, Oregon, and this the singer, I was up there, hey, man, you all see that guy right there? That's Craig. I was in a band <laughs> I was like 16 years old with that guy right there. His name is Craig. Oh, God. <laughs> it was awesome but anyway like i said this is the bunny rabbit's hole and this is the type of shit that we do here where we talk about a central theme each and every week and when we something inspires us to talk about something else we go down that bunny rabbit's hole until we reach the end or until craig gets tired of listening to stupid stories about bands i saw years ago <laughs> and brings us back to the, to our uh, central theme right and as jason said we pick a central topic and we usually take about a week, sometimes a little bit longer, to do research on it. And we research both sides, not just what fits our narrative. And we also include our opinions. So if you're easily offended, you might want to go find something else to listen to or go walk your dog. I don't. Because okay. you have been warned. Yes. This is your one and only warning after this. If you get offended, then I'm glad you made it that far. But anyway, what are we going to talk about today? Today, we are talking about the theories on the extinction event of the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Yes. Love, I love dinosaurs, the thunder lizards. I yes. love, I just love, uh, I, I love just about everything about dinosaurs, man. I love the Jurassic Park movies, even if they were, you know, really poorly written, don't give a shit. Still right. them. But I even liked like uh, Land, uh, Land Before Time. With right. Little Oh, uh, did you uh, did you read the Jurassic Park book series? I did not. You know, it, this is what surprised me because I read the books and I watched the movies. Actually, I think the oh yeah, whatever. But they were actually pretty close to the books. Really? Yeah. So uh, maybe I'll take my comment back that they were maybe the movies just weren't uh, up to snuff telling the stories. But anyway, okay. it, the Michael Crichton books and. I really enjoyed the book Sphere. Mm -hmm. Hated the movie. Hated the movie. That movie was garbage. Yeah. But anyway, we're talking about dinosaurs. We're not talking about Leviathan. Right. So. All right. All right. So, like we said, we're going to talk about all the extinction theories and why the dinosaurs went away. Some, right. some theories have merit. Some don't. So, let's, let's explore Right. And, you know, a word of warning, when you're doing this research stuff, you know, we, we do um, a lot of our research through documentaries um, and, and reading stuff we find online, but you got to be careful of what you find because the other night I'm watching a documentary on the uh, Permian theory, the Permian era mm -hmm. extinction. And I swear to God, they said in a three-minute span, they said the word eruption like 2,700 times. Did they at least say, talk about the guitar solo at least once? Eddie Van Halen, just once. In nope. A, no, nope. It, oh, was, him, man. it was, well, this eruption happened, and then you had the Siberian eruptions, which were caused by a giant, by an enormous eruption, <laughs> and then... In the same documentary, basically they said it was like it was an interruption, like popping a giant blister. So they're equating the extinction event of the dinosaurs to popping a blister. Oh, like a blister in the sun? Could be. Can we go <laughs> on? <laughs> well, you know, okay, we brought that up, so I'm gonna go down that road. Down that road. There are some TV commercials and some ad executives that have got to research what these songs mean before they put them in their ad campaign. <laughs> Burger King had Blister in the Sun by the, in their a commercial for Whoppers once. If you don't know, the song is about jacking off. Right. And 
it, I mean, just the, the lyric, let me go off like a blister in the sun. Right. It's about jacking off. It's about masturbation. It should never be in a Whopper commercial. Right. I mean, there's Violent Femmes had so many other quality songs they could have picked instead. <laughs> right, right. Like, and then I there was another one there. Um, <laughs> the what? This oh, fuck! I can't remember that song. What the song's called? It's from the late late eighties, early nineties. But it's about sucking dick. It, and it's it's in a commercial today. Not surprised. I'm yeah. really not surprised. But so, anyway, yeah. Back to the dinosaurs and your eruption story. Yes. Well, that's that's pretty much it. But I mean, that kind of. Well, I did find another one that was narrated by Jeff Goldblum, and that guy can make anything sound fun. <laughs> you know, he's got that he's got that pleasant personality and that pleasant voice where he's just like, and then this dinosaur died. Yeah, let's all join together and die with the dinosaurs. It's so much fun. I mean, that's you know, that's not what he said, but that's kind of how it sounded. <laughs> right, right. I you know, I'm I've always been a fan of Jeff Goldblum. I love the fly. I love I. But I was so happy to see a movie finally with Jeff Goldblum, where Jeff Goldblum got to be Jeff Goldblum. And right. In Ragnar Thor Ragnarok, when he's the Grand Master, that's Jeff Goldblum. He wasn't yeah. acting. That's him. That's how he. That's how he is in real life. So, but anyway, anyway. So there so, are tons and tons of theories out there. Yeah. So. What I kind of wanted to do to kind of get us our blood flow, get everybody's blood flow and thinking about dinosaurs, I found this little fun website that had uh, a bunch of different things that we think about dinosaurs that aren't true. Okay. I just kind of I want to run down them real quick and then we'll get That's into cool. the. Okay. First one: dinosaurs did not roar. Hmm. Now they more made uh, clucking sounds like chickens or uh, wobbling sounds like a turkey. Okay. We didn't actually. Because they're closely, more closely resembled to birds than they are to lizards, they didn't actually roar with, like you would think they would, like a lion. Uh, the Velociraptor may have been smart for a dinosaur, but it was still just smart for a dinosaur. It's not <laughs> this evil genius that they made it out to be in Jurassic Park. That's right. Actually, not quite as intelligent as your dog. Right. So. Uh, another thing about the Velociraptor, it actually looked more like a turkey. It had feathers and it was about the size of a turkey instead of a six foot, six foot lizard. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the T Rex's arms were they were very small. The bones were actually three times as thick as our bones. Oh wow! And they could actually lift. They're extremely strong. They could actually lift about the equivalent of a piano. Huh. So they weren't just these useless little things. <laughs> like in uh, Meet the Robinsons. Yeah. With these little arms. I don't think this plan was very thought out so well. Right. Um, Big dinosaur, little arms. <laughs> uh, Triceratops didn't really exist. Really? Yeah, it was just a, uh, the only um, versions of, that they had were actually, uh, they were mutated versions of Taurosaurs. Okay. So, which had two horns instead of the third one. On there, they were just, they're actually just, uh, they didn't really exist. They're just torosaurs. Um, not all dinosaurs existed at the same time. Right. We humans today, us listening to this podcast and this, watching this YouTube video, we live closer to the Tyrannosaurus Rex than the Stegosaurus did. Right. Right. So, because Tyr Tyrannosaurus, our stegosaurus was, our, well, you know, 100 million years from uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex, and Tyrannosaurus Rex is only 65 million years from us, or 66. Right, right. So you look closer to them, and you, but you've always seen them in movies where they're always fighting. Yeah. Uh, pterodactyls are pterosaurs. They're not dinosaurs. Okay. So a paleontologist will... It will fuck you up if you say otherwise. <laughs> uh, not all dinosaurs are scaly. More, they're finding out more and more evidence that they probably had something equivalent to feathers. Right. Not actually, feathers, but something close to that. Even the T Rex, they think it was covered in some kind of feather. Uh, 
And then uh, the the T-Rex was actually closer related to a chicken than it was to a crocodile. Hmm. Which I thought that was kind of weird. Right. Um, There were just as many dog-sized dinosaurs as there were the huge uh, Brachiosauruses and T-Rex and Allosauruses and all the bigger ones. And the little ones were the ones that fucked shit up because they could get into nests and right and stuff. And then uh, the T-Rex's eyesight wasn't based on movement. They actually had very, very good eyesight, equivalent to that of an eagle and about 13 times better than what ours was. And that was a study that was done by the University of Oregon last year, did this study about the T-Rex eyes. And they actually had very good eyesight and they could see things up to six kilometers away. Wow. Yeah, so just... Uh, well, you know, that, Allen, just, you, that, that? Just make, that just makes sense though. I mean, because if you think about it, T-Rex is how tall? Like, like, I don't know, say it's, you know, 60 foot tall, is that about right? Sure. So if you're 60 foot tall and you're looking down trying to find food on the ground, if your eyes were only triggered by movement, you would never eat. Right. Exactly. You can't be Dr. Alan Grant standing out in the middle of a rainstorm with a, with, okay, I want to go into that part really quick. Okay. The part, we're talking about Jurassic Park and it's not a spoiler. The movie came out like a million years ago. So there's a part where Dr. Alan Grant is standing there there, the two uh, Ford Explorers are stopped. The kids and the doctor and the one, and the everybody else is in the other other one. But the T Rex is attacking their thing, so he jumps out with a flare, and he throws it over this cliff that's on the other side of this wall. Mm-hmm. Just two minutes earlier in that movie, that same sixty foot drop. That's, you know, that drop is taller than the tree that they ended up in because when it pushes the, the thing over, there was a fucking goat right. standing on land right there waiting for it to try to bait the Tyrannosaurus in so you could see it. Where'd the land go? Right. So that's, that's my little rant on that. But let's get into the extinction. Okay. So there are so many theories. And, you know, the most popular one that everybody knows, everybody thinks of, is the meteor impact. Yes. Okay. And there also was a new report that came out last week, which I may go to. I've got the New York Times version of it. It came out on March 29th. And in this report, um, they found, they show evidence of finding glass in fish fossils, gills, and stuff like that, which would... Back, basically back up that whole meteor impact theory mm-hmm. and you know like most people a lot of people are going well yeah it, it hits because the meteor hit in, in Mexico correct yeah yeah uh, the southern end of the southern edge of the Gulf of Mexico the U, what's called the Yucatan Peninsula right is where, where like Cocoxel or something like that yeah so people are like well if it hit there how could it affect the entire earth well, let's think about that for a minute. So, impact hits. So, and when an asteroid hits, it is a really hard impact. It's hard enough where it could possibly knock the Earth, Earth off its axis. Yeah. So, how powerful was it? Now, one report that I saw said that the way that the impact hit, or the way that the meteor hit, 99% of the of the energy of the a, or asteroid was actually deflected back out into space but that 1% that hit was still the equivalent to 1 billion yes with a b hiroshima size nuclear bombs right so and i mean there's other ways that, that i've seen it put like 60 billion tons of TNT, everything, but uh, 80 million megatons of TNT. Right. Well, and let's put that in perspective with re- with things that have happened the last couple of years, like that whole tsunami in, yes. you know, was it the Indian Ocean? Yeah. And that was triggered by an earthquake. Yes. Now, you have the impact of something that hard 
hitting the earth that is going to cause tidal waves that mm -hmm. is going to cause like giant fireballs going across the sky it's going to cause volcanic eruptions and those eruptions trigger other volcanoes and it becomes a global event because now all these volcanoes are shooting all this magma up and all this lava and all this soot and that clouds the sky blocks out the sun and creates a global warming event yes now to put in perspective the earthquake that caused the japanese tsunami was a nine the in the uh the one that happened in indonesia or the indian ocean i believe was a 9.1 Okay. You know, somewhere in that area, era. The earthquakes that hit after this were, were an 11. Yeah. So if you don't understand how the Richter scale is, how it works, is, okay, you have 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. Each point, each decimal place in there is three times as much as the one before it. So a magnitude one earthquake is 30 times less than a magnitude two. Right. And three is 30 times stronger and then a four is 30 times stronger than a three. So we have a nine that caused, uh, we'll, just, we'll just call them both nines, that caused those two huge tsunamis in recent history. Now we're 30 times, 30 times that. <laughs> that for for the the earthquake that hit after this asteroid hit right so the now, the the amount of energy that we're already talking about is something that we've never experienced on earth right and something else that i found really interesting is there's also a theory that the avian dinosaurs had already become extinct before the impact happened because at the fossil site where they found the impact and they found all the fossils and all that other shit, all they found were land walking dinosaurs and fish and stuff like that from mm -hmm. the ocean. They didn't find any fossils of any avian type dinosaur. Hmm. Hmm. So I found that really interesting. Yeah, but then I, mean, again, I didn't find that in the research, but that's cool. Yeah, I, I did a lot of reading today. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I didn't. No, I didn't. That's that's weird, but uh, we'll we'll go into uh, the perfect storm of what probably happened right near the end. But uh, I want to just kind of keep rolling with. Oh yeah, oh yeah, rolling with this one here, just because the um the force, the energy that was created by now the rock that came and and hit the earth was about the size of Manhattan. Okay, right. just one borough of, like I said, it was like a 10 kilometer sized rock that that hit hit our earth. Now, if you've seen the second G.I. Joe movie, <laughs> they had something in, in the, the, uh, the weapon that Cobra uses in this is a weapon that's actually theoretically devised by the U.S. government. It's called the Hammer of Thor. Now, right. what it is, it's a satellite that's in space, and it's armed with lightning or uh, clo or uh, electrical poles, like the the power poles that you have on the side of the road. Okay. So they're like forty foot tungsten rods. Oh wow! Let's see what they are now dropped from space and only armed with gravity, these things have the same devastating impact as a nuclear bomb. Right. So this, now we're talking about a light pole sized, you know, thing can actually, in, in Cobra, they used, they, they shot it down and it devastated London. Right. Now this is a real weapon that has been devised you know, through theory. Science has proved that this thing can be done. It has all the devastating of effects of a nuclear bomb without any of the fallout. Right. This is just the size of a light pole. So we're talking about 40 foot by, you know, 18 inch piece of tungsten, which is really dense steel can do that. Now we're the rock that hit, we're talking the size of Manhattan. 
Right. Not just like a, the size of the, one of the buildings in Manhattan. We're talking about the whole island hits. So that I, I'm trying to get everybody to understand the magnitude of the power that right. something like this would have. Right. It's similar to um, she, uh, when we talk about the Secret Wars and I'm dropping the mountain on the heroes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Very, very similar. So, um, yep, go ahead. Oh, but so the, uh, the earthquake, the ripples that happened after this, from the Yucatan Peninsula, it took uh, 16 minutes and 40 seconds for this ele size 11 earthquake to roll through the area that I live in and through the area that, that you live in. You live in the Great Lakes area and I live in the Pacific Northwest. So it took 16 minutes for, for that to come 3,000 miles, we'll say. Right. Which is fucking flying fast. Yeah. It seems oh. like 16 minutes, that's a lot of time. No. So, I mean, in theory, you know, if you equate that to the entire globe, so it, it traveled that far, and we're not, it didn't just go north. It went all directions. Yes. So to cover the entire Earth, it probably took about an hour. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, so I'm going to kind of play the, the devil's advocate on here. One of the big um, things about uh, this whole thing is what they call the KP boundary, which mm -hmm. is basically a layer of clay that is all over the world at about the same depth there. And it's, it uh, carbon dates back to the same time, the 65 or the 66 million year range. Yeah. The end of the crustacean period. Yeah. And this layer is like clay but it's it's like volcanic ash but it's full of a mineral called iridium right now iridium is really rare on earth but it's not in meteorites and asteroids right i mean they there is they there is iridium at the earth's core and that could be brought out by volcanoes yeah and that's that's where i was going to go with that is because they're they're saying that it had to have happened uh, this global devastation happened because of the amount of iridium that came from the asteroid itself. But like you said, our Earth's core has a shitload of iridium also, so that this could have been brought up by just mega volcanoes going on everywhere at the same time. Right. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we all, every, most scientists always go back to the impact theory. But, you know, I was doing this. I want to talk about the one that fascinated me the most. So we're going to go away from the impact. I'm sure we'll come back to it. Oh, definitely. Um, but one theory that I found is uh, wiped out by insects. Oh. So okay. they have found these insects in frozen in amber or encased in amber, you know, mm -hmm. Much like they did in Jurassic Park. Yes. You know, but these insects, their their mandibles had evolved, and they looked like looked like garden shears almost. Huh. So they their their mandibles evolved, so they were strong enough to pierce the flesh of the dinosaurs. So, so let's put that into perspective. You you always you always hear about okay, mosquitoes carry malaria. They carry this. They carry that. So you have this insect that goes around and it bites into an herbivore and, you know, carries disease with it. So the herbivore's disease. Then a Trinosaurus rex comes and eats the herbivore and now it's disease. And, you know, it's that spread like that. And everybody's like, well, blah, blah, blah. But they didn't have doctors. They didn't have medicine. They didn't have science. They didn't have big brains. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't have intelligence, so right. we already we already said that they were velociraptors. Were, velociraptors were smart for dinosaurs, but they were still not quite as intelligent as your dog. Right. So I mean, that is you know a somewhat valid theory. Um, it's plausible to say, mm -hmm. but I did find a site that had the ten most, um, basically ridiculous. <laughs> I'm, 
let's see if I can find it. Hold on a second. Um, waiting for it to load. Is this the Smithsonian one? Yes. Yes, it's the uh, 10 Weirdest Dinosaur Extinction Ideas. Yeah. And I'm not going to go into them all. I'm just going to talk, say what they were. The first one is egg eating, which is kind of self-explanatory. They ate each other out of existence. Yeah, which goes back to when I was talking about the dog-sized dinosaurs. This was right. this would be a huge problem because they would have done that. Right. The next one is pathological shells, which basically some had – you know, a couple layered shells, which would basically suffocate the embryo, and some had too thin of shells, which would dehydrate and break and kill the embryo. Mm -hmm. Overactive glands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Evolutionary <laughs> self-destruct, which I find that just funny. Yeah. Too many males. So that actually is kind of interesting because that's uh, the thing in uh, Jurassic Park is – they made them all female. Right. Right. Well, the issue that they had with that was they found out that the frog DNA that they used, those particular types of frogs would spontaneously change sex in order right. to preserve the species. Right. Which is a lot like what a clownfish will do in a similar situation. A clownfish, the dominant male will actually uh, turn female. And therefore, then the, the, the next male in line would actually mate with that, that fish or, you know, uh, fertilize the eggs, and then the clownfish would go on. Now, right. that makes Finding Nemo a really strange movie, if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, it does. There's a real reason why Marlon is looking for Nemo, and it has nothing to do with this, him being a son anymore. Right. Here's my favorite theory. Caterpillars. Caterpillars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Explain this one. Okay, I'm just going to read it. It's just a paragraph. In a fight, a caterpillar would hardly seem to be a match for a triceratops. But in, in a 1962 paper based on his observations of the devastation caterpillars could cause among crops, entomologist Stanley Flanders proposed that the larvae of the first moss and butterflies would have quickly and totally denuded the Cretaceous landscape of vegetation. Herbivorous dinosaurs would have starved. Stanley argued, and predatory dinosaurs would soon be left with nothing to eat but each other. But not only did butterflies and moths coexist with dinosaurs for millions of years, there's no sign of such disastrous caterpillar spike in the fossil record. So there, that's it. That's how caterpillars were done. Oh. The next one is cataracts. Basically, they all went blind. Well, and that's what we talked about that with the T-Rex. Well, it needed to, ha it really needed to have good eyesight for being that tall. To find right. areas to eat. Right. Um, next one is supernova. Kind of self-explanatory. That would wipe every, everything out. Yeah. <laughs> next one is... It leave, leave really no evidence other than right. the shit that we already have. Right. Next one is aliens. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Right. And the last one is dinosaur farts. <laughs> And I'm going to read this one just because it's dinosaur farts. Much like death by aliens, the idea that dinosaurs farted themselves into extinction was never a scientific hypothesis. The notion was a misconstrued conclusion drawn from some recent dinosaur research. Last year, paleontologist David Wilkinson and collaborators tried to calculate how much gas a long neck, hefty sauropod dinosaurs could have produced. The researchers speculated that the dinosaur's annual output of methane gas would have been enough to influence the global climate. But the researchers said nothing about extinction. After all, a variety of sauropods existed for tens of millions of years without showing any sign of gassing themselves out of existence. Ignoring the actual research by Wilkinson and colleagues, various news sites jumped on the site suggested that dinosaurs gassed themselves into oblivion. And such sites were only blowing hot air. No. I <laughs> think they did there. That's funny. That's yeah. really funny. That's, so, that's fantastic. <laughs> there's actually a little bit of credibility to this one though, is out yeah. loud as it sounds, there's actually a, a, a huge um, thing right now about, not right now, it's been, it's been out there for years, about the, the amount of methane that cows put into our atmosphere. Right. And cows actually produce more greenhouse gases than our automobiles do. Right. 
So uh, it doesn't mean that we should all go uh, uh, vegetarian. Absolutely not. What it means is we need more fucking steakhouses to lower the prices and let's eat this shit up. Right. Let's eat these motherfuckers. But we need milk. Yep. Cheese. We need cheese. We need cheese. Gots to have the cheese, man. You don't have the cheese. You don't have the full meal. Yeah, I can do almond milk and uh, coconut milk and all that shit, but uh, yep. I need cheese. You know what else is really fascinating about this whole extinction stuff? Is there's always, there's like two sides, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, these people over here have this theory. These people over here have this theory. And these two sides hate each other. It's akin to the um, Congress with the Democrats and the Republicans. You know, mm-hmm. it's like all these nerds fighting. <laughs> it's like a nerd death match. You know, and yeah. nerd fights are fun. Yeah. Or no. theories about extinction, about which, you know, we can find all this evidence, but are we ever going to truly know for sure since none of us were there? Right. Now, there is one theory that wasn't on on the Smithsonian's top 10 weird ideas. Okay. And this is one that's been put out there that the dinosaurs never existed in the first place. It's all a hoax. Then where did God wouldn't have started with dinosaurs and then moved on to us? Yeah, I'm just going to go with right now. Fuck that theory. Let's go, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I have much I, proof hey, against it. <laughs> yeah, living proof. People said that I don't say anything about the other side unless it's, I'm making fun of them, but I'm making fun of them, and I said their side. Right. So there, fuck all y'all. That's just ignorance. I'm sorry. It, so, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to stop you right there because that you said that it leads me to something. So Friday, I'm down at the Art Reach. I'm painting a banner for the Art Reach, and I'm having this conversation with this other lady who's painting a banner. Mm-hmm. And it was a very good conversation. She's a Jehovah Witness. Okay. And they have different beliefs. And, I mean, we talk. I'm always fascinated by everything. I'm fascinated by how the human mind works and stuff like that. So we got on the topic, well, of evolution versus creativity. Okay. And she's like, well, it's all there in the Bible. I said, yes, but the Bible is written by man, and man is fallible. And, you know, we went back and forth. But it was a very peaceful conversation. Neither one of us got mad at each other. We both knew we weren't going to change the other one's mind. But right. we just, we had a good conversation about it. It was pleasant. It was a good debate. And you don't get those anymore. No, because you're under surveillance now. The, right. the Jehovah's Witness Mafia is following you everywhere you go now. Uh-oh. They're monitoring <laughs> this, this telecast here, too. So, <laughs> But, you know, it was it was nice to be able to do that. You know, and but... Because, but she believes in the dinosaurs because we have proof and she believes in science. So it's kind of, kind of, and I mean, we, cause we got into the whole parts of the Bible and stuff and I'm like, yeah, it's just been, I said, if basically you're like, we talked about before, if your religion is used in fear to control you, get out of it. Hers, she says, isn't. That's her That's her belief, and that's fine. I have no problem with that. It's like, you know, it's not like a Scientology or anything. Right. Oh, shit, now they're watching us. Yeah, or the evangelicals. Oh, shit, or, now they're watching hey, hey, you know what? I want, I want this to be standard for every Scientologist to watch this, even if it's to mock us, because, man, that our numbers would go through the roof. Right. <laughs> so I'm all about the viewership. Right. So, anyways, um, back to the theories. Back to thunder lizards. Yes. Yes, so, yes. Yes. Okay. So, we've talked about some some weird theories. We talked about uh, some bullshit theories. We talked about a hoax. But if you had to nail down, what do you think happened to the thunder lizards? I would say an amalgamation of all the above. Exactly. And I did read this article earlier where basically it was talking about it was one of, by the time the rock hit here, everything was already set in motion. Right. It was like, you know, the dinosaurs are like, fuck, it's hot. 
fuck, look at all this volcanic shit. Is that a rock? Really? Fuck. Right. Right. It's just like that really, really bad day that you had. It just, for them, it just happened to be a stretch over like 100,000 years. Right. Right. You know, because I look at it all and I'm like, every one of them makes sense and combine them all together. And I mean, because the, at the time, you know, with those volcanic eruptions that created a greenhouse effect, which warmed the, warmed the temperature. I mean, every, as what article I read, everywhere on earth, even the North and South Pole, Pole was t-shirt weather. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, like they said, the, the evidence of the climate became much ne- or after the, the thing happened that it actually went from being t-shirt weather to dropping by an average of 44.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes. After the rock hit. Right. So that had to have been, we're going to, I'm going to talk a little bit of evolution here because the, the temperature of the earth with the volcanic activity that was going on in the greenhouse gases that were in there, which trap light or, you know, trap the heat in. Right. So everywhere was t-shirt weather at this time. Well, it does. It was like this for a hundred thousand years. So things adapt, things change. Yes. So now you're things evolve. Evolve. Yes. They evolve into creatures that can live in this type of, of climate. Then when the rock hit, it's, sh- it set up so much debris and, you know, dust and ash or whatever that it blanketed the earth for almost a decade with basically no sunlight getting in. Right. So everything dropped almost 50 degrees Fahrenheit or like, was it almost, it was just over seven degrees Celsius. Right. So these animals that were used to, you know, living in San Diego are now forced to live in Minneapolis in the winter all year. You know, you know, they don't have a local mall that they can go and get a sweatshirt, you know? Right. Well, and if you think about it too, okay, yes, we have the impact. The impact, you know, the force of it, once it gets to the other side of the world, isn't going to be as hard. So things on the other side of the world would probably survive it. Yeah. But the aftermath, not necessarily so. Right. And like, like, like a lot of these people, these, you know, scientists point out that blanketing the earth in a layer, you know, covering it in ash, basically putting a curtain over the earth, killed off the plants, the hardier plants that did, that could survive were quickly consumed into extinction by, by the herbivores. Then as soon as the herbivores started dying, you know, the carnivores would eat the herbivores. Well, now the carnivores are left to eat each other because the herbivores are gone. So now right. they're gone. Right. And um, I don't know, did you run across the Deccan volcanism? No. All right. This, it just basically supports the idea of just tons of volcanic eruptions. Um, and the scientist Keller, who you know has basically surveyed the rocks, and tested mm-hmm. the rocks. Um, she had found that evidence of climate change and skyrocketing mercury levels following the largest eruption. Another research has documented elevated concentrations of sulfur and chlorine consistent with severe pollution by volcanic gases. Now, I read I read another article that talks about similar stuff. Mm-hmm. And you know what they did is they took people to what they called the Black Triangle. And the Black Triangle is in the Northern Czech Republic, a few miles from the German and Polish border. And the, it gets its name because it's from the coal burned by nearby power plants. Now, those power plants created decades of acid rain. Now, these mm-hmm. volcanoes created a ton of acid rain at the time. Right. So it wiped out all plants and all, you know, plant-based things, whatever. I can't think of the word at the moment. Um, but so now the herbivores have nothing to eat. And if the herbivores die off, then the carnivores are going to follow as well. Exactly. Um, here, I found in the millennia that followed after, after the rock hit, 50% of the species on Earth had died or had disappeared. 20% of the world's species of sharks, 
Ray's uh, and uh, sea life had died. 98% uh, of warm corals had died. And of course, 100% of the dinosaurs died. Right. And we'll I mean, say, we'll say 98.9% of the dinosaurs because we still have chickens and we have alligators. So, right. Well, and I mean, you look at it, I mean, you got acid rain. It, it wipes out plants and veg vegetation. Okay. Yes. Well, it also goes into the water. <laughs> so it's going to kill off everything in the water as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it may not go, it, like in the oceans, it may not go that deep. So things that, you know, close to the bottom of the ocean could possibly survive. But right. I mean, with the greenhouse effect, not only was the air warmer, but the water was warmer. Yeah. So Cthulhu and the Kaiju were fine down there. But. Right. And the Kraken. Yes. His, his name was Phil. Phil. Phil Kraken. Phil, Phil McCracken. Uh. <laughs> um, so a lot of this it would be similar to what would happen to us now if Yellowstone was to go off right because uh, a volcanic uh, we and we've had several of these um, extinction level events that have happened in our in our history uh, Toba was one when when the Toba super super volcano went off it actually dropped the human numbers down to almost 10,000 worldwide. Wow. So we are a lot closely, closer related than you want, you want to believe if you want to go back that far. Right. Well, and we also have the Black Plague. Yeah. That could have, that could have easily been an extinction level event. Yes. Very easily. Very easily. And like, uh, so if one of those was to happen today, our, our everything we had. If Yellowstone is to go off in our lifetime, we're fucked. Yeah. And Yellowstone goes off. It erupts every six hundred million years or six hundred thousand years, and it hasn't erupted in six hundred and forty thousand years. Uh, that's not good. No, <laughs> no. So, luckily, in geologic terms, uh, you know, ours, our lifetime, our children's lifetime, and our grandchildren's lifetime really is a small window right to go off so chances are it's not going to go off in our lifetime knock on wood but right. it would the amount of ash and stuff they're they're thinking three to five years wow we would be without direct sunlight yeah and that would fuck some shit up <laughs> and it, not only that would it would it would halt all commercial aviation because our airlines can't fly through volcanoes. Uh, right. Just a few years back, Iceland had a huge eruption and it actually grounded planes in London because the ash was, was in the air. And that stuff, when it hits the, the turbines of the plane, it actually acts like concrete. Right. And you know, jacks it up and you don't want your planes falling out of the air, just ask Boeing. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Uh, but yeah. So I do believe with you that there was a perfect storm of things that went on to uh move us on from the dinosaurs. Right. And and again, I don't think it's something we're ever gonna truly know exactly what happened because we weren't there. It, right you know and it's 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 like every other event in history i mean unfortunately there were no victors so history wasn't written by the victors <laughs> right and in, instead we get people like oh uh walter alvarez and his father luis who are the ones that uh found the iridium and coined the kp boundary that Let's Let's talk about this asshole for a minute. Okay. And I say asshole because if anybody came up with a theory that contradicted his in any shape or form, he would publicly shame them. Right. And this, I mean, this was in 1980 that they did this. Yeah. And it was much like Edison did to Tesla. You know, he would just, he was just a fucking prick. And if you, if you don't understand how much of a prick Edison was, this man publicly electrocuted dogs to show that Tesla's form, his, 
his alternating current form was 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 evil it was bad and it was dangerous but his direct current was a lot safer but so one of the things that edison actually did was um prove that uh, uh alternating current was better for the electric chair than his yeah. form, his form of current so it was closely associated with killing people even right. though Westinghouse, who would actually own the patents for Tesla's stuff, <laughs> was vehemently against wanting right. the, uh, that that uh, um, uh, prestige. I guess. But Edison was an asshole. So was Alvarez. Right. Yeah, and like he, Alvarez died in '88, and his son had carried on his legacy of basically being an asshole. <laughs> and just publicly shaming anybody that didn't agree with what they said. Mm -hmm. And, you know, granted, we, I guess, do that too, to a certain extent, but we are also open to new ideas. It, I will, I will say this though, they, they realized that um, the glass that was formed was mainly found in, okay, so the glass that I'm talking about is when the rock hit, it shot shit up in the air, and it rained back down in the form of glass. I think right. it's, um, uh, what's that term? Is it vitrification? I'm not sure. I think is what it's called. Don't don't quote me on it. Uh, tweet us if, if I'm wrong. But when it, it, it superheats sand and forms it into glass, and this shit rained back down, mainly in North America. So the right. whole point was, we're finding iridium in Italy, and that's where they that's where they did most of their shit from, was in Italy. But then they found that most of this glass was being found in, you know, it was was in North America. So they figured that the impact had to be somewhere in North America. But it wasn't until '91 that they got clear satellite imagery and found uh, was an 88 kilometer sized hole their depression right there at Yucatan and they're like that's probably where it hit right right and you know it's ah brain dead yeah right outside uh right outside uh Chicxulub uh Mexico yeah um but I mean it's there's just so much to it and to think that we could possibly know I mean you know to be someone like Alvarez who just thinks that he knows everything that happened is it's like we've talked about before in other podcasts to, to feel like you know everything is pretty much the true point of ignorance. Right. And speaking of ignorance, I think I'm mistaken. I think I've been saying it's a KP boundary. It's a KT boundary. KT, yes. <laughs> it, it's not kitchen patrol. Right. So yes, it's it's KT. I I just sat here thinking it's like yes, because it's K was for crustacean and T was for tertiary, and that was yeah. the two ages that were back to back. Yes. So now that we got that, I'll shut the fuck up. Right. <laughs> but you know, it's 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 people like Alvarez and like Edison that really halt progressive thinking and moving forward because to think that you know everything and be completely closed off to everything else just limits yourself there's no growth that could possibly be had from that right we we've had a bunch of this shit um especially here in the united states we've had a, a bunch of this shit one one little thing was in the 60s a man created uh and patented a control mechanism to make wipers intermittent. So you didn't have back in, you know, if you were in a car in the 70s and early 80s, it was low, high, or off. That was your wiper. But right. now you like seven million different things. The man who created and patented that tried to sell it to the car company. They wanted nothing to do with it until after his patent ran out 17 years later. Right. So in every fucking car. And that man never made a dime off of it. Yeah. It's shit like that that bothers me. It's right. the hypocrisy behind everything. It, exactly. It's the it 
the greed and the capitalism mm -hmm. is is actually stopped us. And we we see this in the medical field right now. There's there's no money in curing anything. There's only money in treating it. Right. I mean, fuck. How long have we gone on without have a cure for the common cold? We shouldn't right. have cold anymore. Or let's you know look let's go to weight loss. There's how many weight loss programs out there are there? But nobody's gonna tell you. Nobody's gonna tell you how to actually you know get skinny because it's a multi-billion-dollar business. When you think weight loss, unfortunately, one of the first people that people think of is Oprah because yeah. of her affiliate affiliation with Weight Watchers. Right. But she's the biggest yo-yo dieter out there. So right. you be me, but but it's 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 shit like that, man. Right. We have our our society could have progressed so much farther than than we have. Right. Like, I just watched the movie Bohemian Rhapsody the other day, Is and that they talked about um, they you know they they there's a little blurb on there talking about how Freddie died of AIDS, blah blah blah. But and then they set up this foundation in his name, you know, to help help cure AIDS, but we're no closer. No. Because there's no money in it. Right. But, you know, so let's let's put dinosaurs in terms of today. So okay. basically, your dinosaurs are our Congress <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because they're that fucking old and that out of touch with reality. Right. <laughs> And we're basically the insects flying around trying to undermine them. <laughs> yeah. The, we're going to get them. We're going to get them. Yep. Um, so, but I really think there's a lot to that insect and disease one, though. And the, if, you, if you think about it, the disease part could see the insect, the disease, and the bad eggs all actually tie together. Mm-hmm. Because if the insect was, if the insect, or even the, the more, the, the males, too many males. Mm -hmm. So if you have the insects that are spreading the disease, which is leading to getting softer eggs. And then we know that during the incubation is when the sex is, is chosen of these things. They all, you know, they all could have been born male. Right. Or not born right. at all. But the ones that are born could all uh, eventually be male, right? So they right. All, and then the caterpillars come and eat them, and then right. Well, I mean, it could also, you know, we talked because it also talked about having, you know, several layers to the shell. So I mean, yeah. it could also cause that where they where now the shell is too hard and the dinosaur can't hatch from it. Yeah, you know. So I mean, there's. <laughs> There's a lot of logic behind it if you follow it, mm -hmm. um, but to just say, yeah, this is exactly how it happened. It it's it's plausible and it's just as uh, realistic as a big rock from space came and wiped them all out. Because, right. like the Toba event, I was I was talking about, we still managed to survive. There was still 10,000 of us. Right. Now, it would lie. I mean, you would think about it with the numbers there. Something probably should have, should have made it through. Right. Right. Yeah. And I mean, we still have forms of, I guess, quote unquote, dinosaurs like the Komodo dragon, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, things like that, that are pretty much, or like. The um, Frankenator. Yeah, the Megalodon, I believe they were saying, they, they think that that still may be around. Mm. You know, so. I've seen that video. It's pretty convincing to me. The one yep. that's uh, the little um, Explorer sub and the, it swims by. Yep, yep. I mean, there's, well, and I mean, you got the largest, the largest animal in the water is the whale shark. And that could very easily have been a dinosaur. Yeah. I mean, just by the size, the sheer size of this thing. And 
we haven't we've explored more of space than we have of our the bottoms of our ocean right and it's very easy very easily there could be species out there that we still don't know about that we haven't seen i mean but we probably could find cthulhu or right. a original portal open rip that's there that the kaiju come through right you know, we probably could find shit like that down there but because the nautilus is a little like a crustacean which we thought was extinct for millions of years right and then one day they had one of those little um robotic subs down there and while they're they're talking about it they're talking about things that have gone up missing a fucking nautilus swims by their camera they're like whoa whoa what the fuck but wait a minute <laughs> you're supposed you're not supposed to be here so you're telling me that they talked about something and it appeared would yeah. that maybe be the law of attraction they manifested it yes yes Sorry, nice tie-in. Yeah. So go, go listen to that episode. We'll talk. We 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 talk all about the law of attraction. But, right. But yeah. So like for years they didn't understand. They've only seen uh, like carcasses of giant squid, but now we're finding them. Right. Right. And I mean, and it could be because their food sources that deep in the ocean have been depleted, and they're looking for more. Yeah. We really don't know what goes on down there, so it's hard to tell. <laughs> uh, it's it's fascinating though, and I would love. There's nothing more that I would love to do than explore the bottom of the ocean. Mm. I think that would be awesome yeah. and terrifying at the same time. Yes. <laughs> yes. But imagine if, because we've talked about evolution, but here is an idea: what if all of these dinosaurs that survived the impact and the extinction thing? went into the water, evolved into water creatures, and just went to the bottom of the ocean. Right? That's just about as logical as some of the other shit, like they didn't exist in the first place. Right. That's more logical than that one. Right. Well, I mean, because we, we've seen how evolution works. We've seen, like, the finches and the Galapagos Island, how their beak evolved so they can get at their food source better. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, there's theories that we evolved from fish, so... Why couldn't the dinosaurs have evolved into something that could survive in in the deep ocean instead of in a smog, you know, soot-filled sky? Right. There's better oxygen in the water than there was in the atmosphere at the time. Right. Another thing too, I, I wanna I wanna bring up real quick is so the reason that the dinosaurs got to be the size that they did, like the Brachiosaurus being 70 meters long right i mean there's actually theories out there that these creatures were so big that they couldn't actually support their own weight that they right. have actually had to be semi-submerged to be able to that to live which doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever because we have fossilized footprints on land so obviously they did walk on land right but the reason that these creatures got so big was because back then the oxygen level in our atmosphere was a lot there was a lot more like right now it's our oxygen levels at like 21 percent back right. then you're thinking it was i don't i don't i don't have the right number but it was a lot there was a lot more oxygen therefore creatures could grow bigger so right you, would have been well, back here. you didn't have man going down and deforest deforesting every area so they could build skyscrapers right and so after the volcanic activity and after the rock hit it would make sense that they would want to go into a place where you can still have that kind of rich oxygen levels like you would in the water all right we solved it there's still dinosaurs that live at the bottom of the ocean they do go check them out everybody go. get into your submarines right now and go search for the dinosaurs bring yeah. us back fruit show us show us we're right and I will, uh, I will personally eat lunch with anybody who can show me proof that they're down there. Right. Same I don't know here. What that means. I mean, I'm going to come over to your house and have a bologna sandwich with you or something. But no, you got to come to me because I, I don't have the money to travel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's going to take me a while to get there. But but I mean, there's just so many, and you know, there's 
Okay, the alien theory. So let's go. Let's touch on that. You know, yeah, it's far fetched, but maybe the dinosaurs went to space with them. Well, um, so one of the alien theories that I I had actually heard about was actually kind of um, kind of makes sense. In I mean, it's out there. I mean, I mean, it's it's a wacky theory, but Earth was pretty much uninhabited by anything back in the day, okay? We're talking 300 million years ago, where the, the planet is finally cooled down to where our terrain is actually, you know, it's solid now, Thing, plant life is starting to grow, we got little forest creatures, whatever. But the aliens brought the, al or the dinosaur species here to terraform Earth. Okay. So, they um, kind of kickstarted uh, like a little biome, little. Um, it was an experiment by them. So they, you know, you you never just throw out your your prize cattle into a field without throwing something out there first. Right. You know, no predators are going to come out down and take them. So they they threw out the the dinosaurs and let them do their thing, and then come back and it's like, okay, Earth is ready. Shoot a rock down there get rid of all the dinosaurs, let it, let it do its thing. And then they brought man here. Right. Because the one thing about earth that most people don't understand is the earth always replenish itself. When, when human beings are completely wiped out, the earth will replenish itself. It will heal itself. It is a living organism. Yes. And it's going to basically, you know, like, that black triangle th for place I was talking about where they had all the, the coal plants. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that would grow there was grass because the acid rain killed everything else off. Yeah, but they yeah. talked about walking through that area, hearing no insects, no birds, no animals, nothing. And they, they, there was trees that were down um, in the overgrowth. So at one point they had trees, but they won't, you know, they, they're not growing anymore. So, from all that acid rain, hitting that, multiply that globally with all these volcanic eruptions. Mm -hmm. And so, but the, the difference is the volcanic eruptions stopped. These coal power plants have not. Right. And acid rain is just a weird, weird phenomenon anyway. It's not... It's not like you you would think. It's not uh, you know actual like hydrochloric acid falling out of the sky. What it is is all the chemicals get put in there, and then the rain comes through and it grabs the chemicals. It changes the pH levels in the rain to where it becomes mildly acidic to moderately acidic. So it's still actually water, but it's the pH is thrown off. If anybody who has ever had a had a pool, it knows a little bit about pH balances and water and how it can fuck with your skin. Right. Especially hot tubs. Hot tubs can really fuck you over if you get your, your pH wrong. But, so now just imagine this shit, you know, hitting you. Yeah. If you, if it fucks you up to be in a hot tub where the pH balance is off, now imagine you can't get out of it. Right. You know, the only comfort that you have is to hide under a tree that's also being pelted with this shit. So it's dying. And right. it doesn't stop raining. It just keeps going and going and going and going until right. everything is dead. Right. I mean, you could hide out in a cave or something like that for a while, but eventually you're going to need food. Yeah. And the food that you're going to go find, you're going to have to find something that is, it's got to be big because you're going to have to cut off many uh, contaminated layers before you can get to something that you can actually eat. Right. Right. Um. And forget about fruits and vegetables because they're gone. Yeah, yeah, they're just all mush at that point. You know, it's 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 just it's amazing that it's, it's amazing to me that we had this huge we've had several extinction level events that happened, and yet it always always everything grows back. Everything you know, once you wipe out all that, everything clears up. Everything comes back. Like. Uh, like George Carlin once said one of his things, it's like, you know what? Eventually the earth is going to shake us off like a case of bad fleas. Right. 
you know, and the it's like, well, we've got all this plastic, all this plastic. It's like the earth doesn't have a plastic problem. The earth has a human problem. Right. right. The humans will be gone and the earth will just come into a new paradigm. Earth plus plastic. Right. <laughs> right. Oh. But you know, it's I'm I'm kinda like on that subject. I I was uh somebody had shared a post about changing water bottles like the, that you know you buy at the store with water in them mm -hmm. from plastic to hemp because yeah. it's biodegradable but you mean one of somebody these brought up, I'm drinking this whole show <laughs> yeah but somebody brought up the point that um if you don't drink the water fast enough it biodegrades and starts leaking all over the place <laughs> exactly it doesn't have a long shelf life so it's something no. that you know you buy to drink right now <laughs> there's there's uh, several companies around the world that do something called uh, 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 chemical um, uh, chemical recycling. Mm -hmm. And they take plastics and then they break it back down into their base components. And then they sell those base components back to the, the plastic manufacturers. Right. Well, so, you know, there's, what, there's a country that has is using trash to supply energy. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we have we have some um, landfills here that actually uh, they've run geothermal shit through the through the actual. Um, they well, what they do is they pump water through these lines that are in there, and underneath these mounds of trash, they're decomposing. When they're that decomposition of the trash actually heats it up. So it's a, it's creating heat on this water, and they're actually creating geothermal heat, right? That way. Well, and okay, let's get down to the real reason why dinosaurs went extinct is their lack of opposable thumbs. Yes. And prehensile toes. Yes. <laughs> and they didn't have smartphones to get the answers to things. Right. Right. So for, I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they couldn't just say, hey, Siri, hey, Google, how do I survive a meteor, yeah. as one of my kids just said. <laughs> okay, Google, how do I build a bomb shelter? Which just set my phone off. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, this is actually one of our shorter episodes, because I don't really think there's much more that we can go on. I mean, we've talked about you know, all the, you know, we talked about the majority of theories out there. We didn't talk about all of them because, like we said in previous podcasts, we're not going to talk about everything because we want you to go explore for yourself. We're here to inspire thought. Yes. And discussion. Yes. And mature discussion. <laughs> if you have to attack somebody, you're automatically wrong. And when you have somebody tell you, their source for what they're talking about. Don't say, where'd you get your source? So right. that's, uh, people don't know how to debate anymore. And that's just pisses yeah. me off. Well, because you know, their Supreme leader is like, yeah, everybody tells me I heard, you know, these guys told or I, you know, I got the best minds. But yeah, his, when he cites his sources, it's no, oh, everybody's telling me that. Right. Who the fuck is everybody? <laughs> I didn't tell you, so it's wrong. Okay, right. there you go. End of story, period. <laughs> so basically, to sum up tonight's episode, we talked about dinosaurs. We talked about dinosaurs dying, which is sad. Sad panda. Sad panda. Because dinosaurs are cool. Dinosaurs I mean, are cool. Can you imagine, though, being a T-Rex at that time? You're walking along going... Man, that fucking soot in the sky sucks. These bugs are just keep eating the shit out of me, and I'm hungry. And I got little arms, and <laughs> my butt itches, and I can't scratch it. These arms and, don't reach back. And I'm hungry, but last time I ate something, I got sicker and shit, and oh, and the diarrhea that came from it. I think I filled a a crater. <laughs> oh fuck, a rock is coming at me. Oh man, I got the farts. Yeah, oh, farts, I think you, you got them too, man. Oh, man. I can't smell anything but fart. Earth stinks. Yeah. 
So yeah, that that was tonight's episode in a nutshell. Yep. Dinosaur farts stink. Yep. Yep. Hashtag dinosaur farts stink. There you go. <laughs> All right. So you can reach us on social media at the the bunny's hole on Twitter and on uh, Instagram. Uh, you can find our website at thebunnyrabbitshole.com. You can uh, go find our Patreon page. It'll be the bunny's hole. Uh, and go, uh, yeah, just go out and make the world a better place. Right. Go and uh, think for yourself and research things for yourself. Don't take other people's words for it. You don't know. We could be making all this shit up. I don't even have a website open here. I'm just, I'm just rambling. Right. So you know what? Think for yourselves. Don't be yeah. stupid. <laughs> all right, all. Insert tagline here. All right. Love you guys. Peace out.